Let us build a house where love can dwell And all can safely live A place where saints and children tell How our hearts learn to forgive Built of hopes and dreams and visions Rock of faith and vault of grace Here the love of Christ shall end divisions All are welcome, all are welcome All are welcome in this place Let us build a house where love is found in water, wine, and wheat. A banquet hall on holy ground where peace and justice meet. Here the love of God through Jesus is revealed in time and space. As we share in Christ the feast that frees us, all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place, in this place. All are welcome in this place. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the love of Jesus Christ our brother, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, we're reaching the end of the Lenten season. Holy Week is just a week away. Let's prepare our hearts then to celebrate this Eucharist and this time together. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord our God, by your help, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers, the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All from least to greatest shall know me, says the Lord, for I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. Be with me, Lord, I pray. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. Be with me, Lord, I pray. You dwell in the shelter of the Lord Most High, who abide in the shadow of our God. Say to the Lord, my refuge and fortress, the God in whom I trust. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. Be with me, Lord, I pray. No evil shall befall you, no pain come near. For the angels stand close by your side, guarding you always and bearing you gently, watching for your life. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. Secure in God's love, lifted high those who trust in God's name. Call on the Lord, who will never forsake you. God will bring you salvation and joy. Be with me, Lord. When I am in trouble, be with me, Lord, I pray. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son, though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, 
who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder, but others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this, indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. The following remark has been attributed to Mark Twain for over a century. When I was a boy of 14, my father was so ignorant, I could hardly stand to have the old man around. But when I got to be 21, I was astonished at how much he had learned in seven years. The fact that Mark Twain's father died when he was 11 does not diminish the accuracy of this comment. In a way, Twain is speaking for every eye-rolling, whatever, mumbling teenager of any time. Of course, the real insight is that it is not the father, the parent, who has changed, but rather the child who has a deeper understanding of who the parent is. When we are children, our parents can seem stern, ominous, even foreboding. But as we mature, hopefully our appreciation of them deepens as we develop an adult relationship with them. This same change of understanding can be applied to our relationship with God. Isn't that what St. Paul means when he tells the Corinthians, when I was a child, I used to speak like a child, think like a child, reason like a child. When I became a man, I did away with childish things. Both personally and communally, our understanding of God should deepen. All too often, we see God in the Hebrew scriptures as a child sees a parent, stern, ominous, foreboding, and even vindictive. And when we get to the Christian scriptures, suddenly God improves and becomes loving, tender, merciful, and forgiving. But is it God who has changed, or have we? The answer is obvious. God is God. And as God always has been and always will be, God is unchanging. This change in our understanding of who God is profoundly affects how we relate to God. One area in which we can trace this change of understanding is through the various covenants described in the scriptures. Beginning with God's covenant with Abraham and the subsequent covenants with Noah, Moses, and David, again and again, God offered life-sharing opportunities to the people of Israel. It is important to realize that a covenant is not the same as a contract. I will do this if you do that. No, rather, a covenant is a relationship built on mutual commitment and care. Perhaps the model of marriage vows is the best metaphor for a covenant bond. Understanding this degree of intimacy and care took some time for Israel to grasp. A major shift in the model of the covenant between God and Israel is outlined in the first reading today from the prophet Jeremiah. In the 31st verse of the 31st chapter of his book, Jeremiah 31, 31, describes the new covenant God will make with the people. He says, 
I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. Whereas the old covenant included laws inscribed on stone tablets and was entrusted to the whole community, the law of the new covenant will be written on the hearts of individual members. Where the former covenant required external conformity, the new one will call for interior commitment and transformation. The new covenantal relationship will be entered into freely with each individual being directed from within. The opening verses of the letter to the Hebrews indicate the urgency which God felt in connecting with God's people, an urgency seen in God's consistent efforts to communicate with them. It says, in times past, God spoke in partial and various ways to our ancestors through the prophets. In these last days, he has spoken to us through the Son, who made, he made heir to all things and through whom he created the universe. And so the promise of Jeremiah is realized in Jesus. The final covenant is established through the blood of the cross. In the gospel passage, which we have just heard, which comes before John's long description of the Last Supper, Jesus makes clear what this new covenant will consist in. The narrative opens with Greeks seeking to meet Jesus. Some scripture scholars speculate that this is included as an indication that eventually the gospel will be preached to the entire world. But Jesus replies to Philip's and Andrew's information about the Greeks with the announcement that his hour has come. The hour that Jesus refers to is the time of his glorification, but also the hour that he dreads. It is the time of both his anguish and his exaltation. And this is demonstrated by the image he uses of the seed that must be sown. If you keep a package of seeds in the glove compartment of your car or on the shelf in your garage, nothing will happen, nothing will emerge, nothing will be produced. The seed, to realize its potential, has to be planted and then stop being a seed in order for something more, something else to come forth, a flower, a vegetable, a fruit, a bush. And as this is true for a seed, so Jesus says it is true for human life. At each successive stage of life, hopefully we leave behind our former self for a deeper, fuller experience of life. The infant becomes a toddler, who becomes a schoolboy, who becomes a high schooler, who becomes a college student, who emerges as an adult. Jesus indicates that the same transformation must happen in our relationship with God. We must leave behind our former self in order to enter into this new covenant of life and love with God. Only through the willingness to relinquish one form of life can there be hope for another. John's gospel does not contain a description of what is called the institution narrative, the words and action of Jesus at the Last Supper when he blessed the bread and wine and called his followers to do so when remembering him. The other three gospels and Paul's letter to the Corinthians do give us the institution narrative. Jesus' words over the cup are the very heart of what he's calling us to. He says, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus establishes this final covenant written on our hearts through the chalice of his blood, and his words of promise are ratified the next day upon the cross. We enter into this covenant when we share in the Lord's Supper and receive him in the Eucharist. But just as the Last Supper led to Calvary, we who share in this meal are called to imitate him in love and service. The references to seed and its transformation apply not only to Jesus' situation, but also to that of his followers. A favorite Italian saying of Saint Pope John XXIII was, sotto la neve il pane, under the snow, there is bread. 
It refers to the winter wheat that is sown in late autumn and comes to fruition the following spring. For all intents and purposes, it seems to those who fail to understand agricultural processes that this seed has been wasted as it lies in the cold ground. But deep within the earth, the seed has started to germinate and with the warmth of spring will bring forth a harvest for food and life. So too in our lives, seeds from the Lord have been planted in our hearts by the care and good deeds of others. All too often, the struggles and trials of life, the winter storms of our existence, can encapsulate our hearts and make them frigid. But deep within, the potential for goodness and love lies buried. It is then that we must allow the Lord to once more write the words of his covenant upon our hearts. Words that will, as we sing in the Pentecost sequence, melt the frozen, warm the chill. It is then we must accept his invitation to this covenant of eternal life and eternal love. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With confidence now, let us pray for our needs, the needs of the church, and the needs of the whole world. For the church that all the baptized may hear once more the call to lose oneself for the sake of the gospel, to follow Christ by serving others, and to live the mission of Christ by how we live our daily lives. For this we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For national leaders, that they conduct their work with dignity and integrity, seeking what is best for the common good and attending to the special needs of the vulnerable. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the emotional, physical, and financial harm that has arisen from the pandemic, that the coronavirus pandemic will end, and that people will live with greater consideration, compassion, and care for one another. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For people who are burdened by feelings of guilt and unworthiness, that they will be restored by God's mercy and accept the profoundly forgiving love of God. For this we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For all those suffering in body, mind, or spirit, and for continued healing for all those who have received prayer shawls from our parish. For them we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those who have passed into new life, especially Sandy Rodriguez, Michael Garaz, Carol Crestos, and Monsignor Michael Del Vecchio. For them we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our personal needs and the intentions written in the parish book of prayers, which we now offer in the silence of our heart. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God in heaven, the love of your son led him to accept the suffering of the cross, that his sisters and brothers might glory in new life. Change our selfishness into self-giving. Help us to embrace the world you have given us, that we may transform the darkness of its pain into the life and joy of Easter. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Alas, a grain of wheat shall fall upon the ground and die. It remains but a single grain with no life. If we have died with him, then we shall live with him. If we hold firm, we shall reign with him. Unless a grain of wheat shall fall upon the ground and die, it remains but a single grain with no life. If anyone serves me, then they must follow me. Wherever I am, my servant will be. It remains but a single grain with no life. Pray, sisters and brothers, that this our sacrifice will be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from our hands for the praise and glory of God's name for our good and good of all the souls of the church. Almighty God, hear us and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the work of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. holiness make holy therefore these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion 
He took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his friends saying, take this, all of you and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup and once more giving thanks, gave the cup to his friends saying, take this, all of you and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and the everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate this memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life in this cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop and all who minister in your church and all your holy people. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and our mother and Joseph, her husband, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. We join together now and pray with confidence for the coming of God's kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord Jesus be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let's safely share with one another a sign of the peace of Christ. Peace, Christian. Peace. Peace, Claire. Peace. Peace, Father. on us Lamb of God 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Though not physically present at this Mass, as the baptized, we are intimately united as the body of Christ as we participate in this spiritual holy communion. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray that we may always be counted among the members of Christ 
in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. O Lord, bless your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what, at your prompting, they desire they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And after our final song, we'll be back with some announcements with Sister Jeremy. This Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. very, very important weeks because we have the Catholic Charities Drive at this time. And Catholic Charities really helps over 100,000, 120,000 people in Western New York every year, some amazing uh, figure like that. And you don't have to be Catholic to get assistance from them. So it's really important this year with all that's been going on with the pandemic to help those people who are really struggling, our sisters and brothers who are in great need. So whatever you can do, try to be especially generous for Catholic Charities this year. And we really appreciate your support. And although we're still virtually shut down in many ways, there's still a lot of things happening here at St. Joseph's. If you take a look at the parish bulletin, you'll see that our school is actually preparing to put on a play, a musical, Annie, and they will record it and it will be, on, uh, it will be shown in June at the drive-in. Also, uh, we invite you to join a community-supported agriculture program that we are participate in at Porter Farms. It's a family-owned farm out in Alba, New York, and uh, you pay a beginning fee to help the farmers to get started with the growing season. And uh, every week you come and pick up a bag of vegetables. It's a wonderful way to support local farms, to buy locally, and also to be introduced sometimes to vegetables that you might not think of purchasing on your own. And we Eggplant. also... Eggplant. <laughs> Eggplant among them, Father. Uh, we also invite you to take a look at the, uh, the schedule for Holy Week that's in the, on the last page of the bulletin. I say eggplant because that's one thing I could live without, I think. Uh, one, one other thank you. 
People have been very generous also to the Be A Star collection for the school. Thank you for supporting our school and our students. It really has been very, very helpful for this year. So stay well, stay safe, and God bless you. And who may go up the mountain of the Lord? Who can stand in his holy place? Thank you.